Welcome back to BNB Legal. In our today's vlog, we're going to be talking about sexual harassment. And to be more precise, we'll be discussing about sexual harassment at workplaces. We have chosen this topic particularly because we put our foot down and we stand for safety of women. Many a time have we heard of the word sexual harassment. Now what do you mean by sexual harassment? It is a behavior characterized by making of some unwelcoming and inappropriate sexual remarks or maybe some physical advances at a workplace or other professional or social setup. Now sexual harassment at workplace includes situations where a person is asked to engage in a sexual activity as a condition of that person's employment and may include situations which create an environment of hostility, intimidating or humiliating for the recipient. Now in order to check the menace of the sexual harassment, the government of India enacted the commonly known POSH Act in the year 2013. Now coming to the legal definition of the word sexual harassment, it is defined under section 354A of the Indian Penal Code. It defines sexual harassment as an offence wherein a man commits any of the following acts. It can be any physical contact and advances involving unwelcome or explicit sexual overtures. It can also be a demand or request for sexual favours or showing pornography against the will of a woman. Or it can also include making any sexually coloured remarks. This offence is cognizable, payable and triable by any magistrate. Now, the guidelines of the Honourable Supreme Court in one of the cases of Vishakha v. State of Rajasthan in 1997 and CEDAW guidelines by the United Nations led to the enactment of this sexual harassment laws in India. We will now try to understand that who is a harasser and who is a harassed. As against the common notion, sexual harassment at workplace is not limited to interactions between male bosses and female subordinates. It can also occur between any of the co-workers and it may include the following instances. Now, for example, subordinate harassment of a superior or maybe same-sex harassment. Offenders can be supervisors, co-workers or any non-employee such as customer, vendor or supplier. The definition, as provided by the statute itself, is broad and does not restrict the place of the perpetrator to the physical environment of the workplace. Now, it takes into account all the possible access places, points and scenarios wherein the aggrieved woman can be in his contact. As per the Act, the inclusions in the term workplace have been given below and for a detailed and better understanding, you might want to go through it in detail. The definition has tried to take into account all the government, private, organized as well as unorganized sectors. It includes any enterprise owned by an individual or self-employed workers engaged in the production or sale of goods or providing services of any kind. ICC or Internal Complaints Committee is an internal committee of a workplace to receive and redress complaints of sexual harassment. It is mandatory and not optional for every employer to formulate and constitute ICC for addressing any sexual harassment complaints arising in the workplace. An important compliance to be followed in such companies is that if they have their offices at different districts or different states in India, such committee needs to be set up at every location of the office setup. The law provides that an organization that has 10 or more employees must constitute a IC to receive and redress complaints on sexual harassment at workplace. Let me now talk about the composition of this internal complaints committee very briefly. Now there has to be a presiding officer and this chairperson of ICC should be a senior level female employee. Also, the ICC should include an external member and this person should be familiar with issues related to sexual harassment and this person can be from any NGO or any association committed to the cause of women. Now, the ICC should also include two or more members from its employees and preference should be given to those employees who have some legal knowledge or some experience in social work. in case of complaints in unorganized sectors with less than 10 employees. In such cases, the complaints regarding sexual harassment will lie to the local complaints committee or the LCC. The district magistrate or the additional district magistrate or maybe the collector or the deputy collector shall be called the district officer and he will carry out the required functions as given under this act. The district officer will have a local complaints committee in every district in order to take up such grievances. 
The following are some of the instances where a complaint shall lie to this LCC. Complaints from women working in an organization with less than 10 people or maybe when the complaint is against the employer himself and also in case of women working as domestic servants. Let me now talk about that how do you make a complaint under this POSH Act. Now this complaint can be made by a victim, maybe her relative or friend or any other person with the knowledge of this incident and also with the permission of the victim can file this complaint. The complaint should contain a description of each incident with relevant date and timings. The inquiry process under this act is confidential and any person who breaches this confidentiality will have to pay a penalty. The complaint should be made within a period of one year from the date of incident and in case of series of incident, it has to be made within a reasonable period. The ICC may extend the period if it is satisfied that the circumstances were such. The committee is required to complete this inquiry within a time period of 90 days. Now after completion of this inquiry, a report will be prepared and acted upon within 60 days. Conciliation these days is a very important aspect of ADR not only in India but all over the world. Now once the complaint and reply are received and written, before initiating the inquiry, the ICC may take steps to conciliate the complaint between the grieved party and the respondent. Now this shall be initiated only if requested by the aggrieved party. It should be made clear to all the parties that conciliation in itself does not imply the acceptance of complaint by the respondent. It is a very practical mechanism through which issues are resolved or maybe some misunderstandings are cleared. In case where a settlement is arrived at, the ICC will record and report the same to the employer for taking some appropriate action. And if this conciliation fails and no settlement is reached between the parties, the ICC shall proceed to conduct a formal inquiry into this complaint. The ICC shall provide copies of this settlement to the aggrieved person and the respondent. And once the action is implemented, no further inquiry is conducted. If the respondent and the employer fail to implement this terms of condition, then the aggrieved person may request the ICC to conduct a formal inquiry into this matter. Let me now discuss about the process of inquiry and investigation in all these offences of sexual harassment. An inquiry shall be made to probe into the matter and to find whether the accusations are true or are frivolous in nature. After receiving the complaint, the ICC or the LCC shall initiate an inquiry. And after initiating this inquiry, the ICC or the LCC is required to investigate into the matter. Therefore, you got to understand two things that first an inquiry to probe that whether the accusations are false or are true and in case they turn out to be true, then an investigation is carried out in this regard. The ICC or the LCC have certain powers for the purpose of investigation and these have been listed below. These include summoning and examining a person on oath, requiring the discovery and production of some important documents, giving an opportunity of being heard to the respondent and other such matters. As I already stated, we'll also be talking about the consequences of all these sexual harassment offences. Let us talk about a scenario when no sexual harassment is deduced. Now when the ICC or the LCC comes to a conclusion that no sexual harassment has taken place, then in such a case the ICC or the LCC shall mention the same very clearly in the report. They will now send this report to the employer or the district officer recommending that no action needs to be taken and the accused shall be acquitted of all the charges. Now, there is a scenario when the complaint is found to be malicious. If the ICC or the LCC comes to a conclusion that the complaint made was with a malicious intent and was frivolous in nature, in such a case it shall recommend to the employer or the district officer to take strict action against the woman, and this may also include termination. We stand with women who have ever been a victim of sexual harassment and we encourage them to put up a fight for themselves. We hope that you find this video informative and helpful. If you really do, then please like this vlog. 
Also for more such vlogs and videos, log in to www.bnblegal.com and do subscribe to our YouTube channel.